Hey guys, this is Elliot the iPad Pro, and I just upgraded from the 2017 12.9 inch MacBook Pro to the 2018 12.9 inch MacBook Pro. So I've been using this device for about three days now, and I'm going to tell you the good, the bad, and overall what I think. So I'm a computer scientist, and I've been using the iPad as my main device for over a year now. So I have a lot of experience using the iPad for school and for computer programming. I actually have a channel where I teach total beginners how to code Python on an iPad, so you should definitely check that out. Okay, so now you see the new iPad on the left and the old iPad on the right. And the first thing you'll notice is the bezels around the screen. So the new iPad feels more compact with the thinner bezels, but really I wish they kept the iPad the same size and then they just made the screen bigger. So here you can see me do work that involves multitasking between two apps on the iPad. And you see I kind of have to do this dance where I shift around the size of the two screens. And this works, but it would be a lot more convenient if I just had a little bit more space on both sides. So this is actually how I do all of my coding as a computer scientist. And if you're curious about how this is done, you can check out my other tutorials about coding on an iPad. Another really cool thing about the iPad is you can pull up a third application, which is really convenient if you want to like get text from your friends and respond to them while you do your work. So let's talk about design. Well, to me, this just looks like an iPad. I mean, I guess they made it thinner and they made the corners a little different, but at the end of the day, it's just a sheet of glass with some metal on the back. And I know people like to talk about weight. I guess this thing is one tenth of a pound lighter. Um, I really don't know how anyone could notice that. But what really distinguishes this iPad from the previous is the accessories. So this is the iPad with the case and with the pencil. The pencil connects magnetically and the case is really slim and adds very little bulk to the overall design. One thing that worried me was that the case only had one hinge on the back and no hinges on the front. While this is different than the old design, the case still managed to have all the same functionalities. The old iPad came in two pieces, a front and a back. Now the back did stay on 24-7, so that did give your iPad more protection. Also, this case covers the corners of the iPad, and the new one doesn't. The screen protector is foldable in three different locations. This allowed me to position and use the iPad in a lot of different ways. Now one really annoying thing about the keyboard was that it connected on the side and this would cause it to fall off all the time. Also when you folded it, it made the front of the iPad a lot more bulky. Now probably the thing that annoyed people most about the old iPad was that there was nowhere to put the pencil. But a simple fix to that is to just put a pencil clip on it and then clip it to the front of the case. The new iPad does not need this because the magnet works great. Putting on the case is really easy. The magnet that attaches the iPad to the case is on the back of the iPad now and that makes it so that the case won't accidentally fall off. Now one thing is this case does not protect the corners of your iPad, so you should really get Apple Care because I've dropped my iPad at least 15 times. So the new keyboard can be used at two different angles, which is awesome because you can use it at a table, but you can also use your iPad lying down, like on your bed. Now the new iPad can also be used in a teepee position, although it doesn't stick as well as the previous one did. Now the case also allows you to use the iPad when you're standing, and this is actually really useful. For instance, this is a great feature to have when you're doing a PowerPoint presentation. Finally, I really like to use my iPad when I'm relaxing with my back against the wall by resting my iPad over one knee. This is really great for when you're watching YouTube videos. Okay, that's it for the case, so let's move on to the pencil. The Apple Pencil is truly one of those game-changing pieces of tech. It makes it easier to highlight notes in a book than a highlighter. Also, if you want to write your own stuff, you can. I really don't know how I did math before I got one of these pencils. Another great thing is that you can add pages to a book. So let's say you finished reading a chapter and you want to take the quiz. Well, you can just put another page inside of the book and then you can start writing down your quiz answers. Finally, let's say you want to search through all of the notes that you wrote inside of a book. Well, you can actually search through your notes based on the color that they are. 
Now the biggest problem I had with the original pencil was the weight. It weighs a lot more than your average pencil. And if you're a student, there will be days where you're going to be using this pencil for more than 12 hours nonstop. Now the new pencil is much lighter. It really feels like a pencil. It's nimble and weightless. In my opinion, this is the greatest upgrade that they made to the new iPad, because without it, you're going to get pain in your hand. Now, there are some other upgrades to the pencil that are really convenient. For instance, you no longer have to charge the iPad in that awkward way where it looks like a stingray. Also, with the wireless charging, you no longer have to remember to consciously charge your pencil. And that's also pretty convenient. Now you'll see how I usually have my iPad set up when I use it for writing. On the new iPad, this setup doesn't really work on tiled floors. So other than weighing less, I would say the new pencil feels the same as the previous pencil. It has the same level of latency and the same sensitivity. I do actually really like the added feature of being able to use double tap to get to the eraser. Although I find that I sometimes hit this by accident still. Okay, so I told you guys what I like about the new iPad, but now it's time to go over what I don't like. So the thing that concerns me the most about the new iPad are the speakers. So I remember when I got the first iPad, I was just blown away by how good the speakers were. They had this amazing bass that made it so I didn't need any portable speakers at all. And when I picked up the new iPad and I used YouTube for the first time, I could really tell the difference. The new iPad speakers just don't have the same level of bass. And I tried finding information about this online, but I couldn't find anything. So I decided I would just run my own test. So this paper is about an experiment I did to test the speakers on the iPad. And you can find the paper and the data in this video's description. But to sum it up, I took an audio clip and then I played it on both iPads at full volume. Then I did some statistics to produce the spectrum that was created by both iPads. So this spectrum tells you the strength of each audio frequency for both the old iPad and for the new iPad. So on the x-axis, we have frequency. So all sound is composed of waves and low frequency waves are bassy sounds and high frequency waves are treble sounds. And the size of the bar tells you the strength of the sound at that point. So it's pretty clear to see that the old iPad has a lot more bass frequencies than the new iPad. And what that means is that the old iPad has a better bass. So from these graphs, it definitely looks like the old iPad has better speakers. But as someone commented, I need to make my test more rigorous. So I'll be updating my paper as I get more data. Now, moving on, there was another piece of tech that was downgraded on the iPad, and that was the camera. So apparently they removed one of the camera lenses and they removed some of the motion blur tech. Now, personally, I have not noticed any difference in the pictures, and I really tried to see if I could hack that motion blur difference. But that being said, I'm still annoyed that they didn't upgrade the camera. You're paying a lot more money for this new iPad, and it still has the same camera as the one from a year and a half ago, or maybe one that's even worse. Now, I should say that I do really appreciate the upgraded front-facing camera, and I do like how I'm able to do portrait mode on my iPad. And the Face ID password was really cool, but just yesterday it stopped working, and I got this message that says I have to go to the Apple Store to get it fixed. So this is less of a problem and more just something that I find ridiculous, which is Apple has been hyping so much how good the new screen is on the iPad, and I really just can't tell a difference. The screen looks the exact same as my last iPad. Finally, the thing that concerns me the most, other than the less good speakers, is actually an upgrade and not a downgrade. And that's the upgrade to the CPU and the GPU. So I haven't seen any performance benchmarks come in yet for the new CPU and GPU, but I'm sure it will be better than the last model. The thing that concerns me is that why did they even update the CPU and GPU? 
The main problem with the old iPad was it didn't have enough RAM. So a computer is kind of like a car where all the pieces need to be good in order for the machine to function at maximum performance. Right now the iPad has the CPU and the GPU of a high quality modern laptop, but it has 4 gigabytes of RAM. That's like the amount of RAM in a mid-tier computer from 15 years ago. Now, on my old iPad, I had absolutely no problem with the CPU and GPU handling the applications. But what I did have problems with was having many applications open because there was not enough RAM on the device if you really max out the web browsers. And you're going to have this exact same problem on the new iPad Pro because regardless of the CPU, it has the exact same amount of RAM as the old iPad Pro. So then the question is, is Apple intentionally handicapping its products and then why? And also apparently you can get an extra two gigabytes of RAM if you buy the most expensive iPad, although Apple isn't really telling people about that. All right guys, I told you what I thought was good about the iPad Pro, I told you what I thought was bad, and now I'll tell you my overall view. So the accessories and features that they added to the new iPad Pro are legitimate improvements, and I really believe the iPad Pro is the best portable computer that you can buy on the market. But the thing is, before the 2018 iPad Pro came out, the best portable computer on the market was the 2017 iPad Pro. So I feel like Apple just took last year's model and then put it inside a fancier case and now is selling it for way more money. Instead of trying to build the best portable computer in the world, I wanted to see Apple try and build the best computer in the world. There's already other companies like Microsoft that are trying to push the limits of touch devices, like with the Surface Book 2. And if Apple doesn't also try to push the limits, then it's going to fall behind. So if you guys are excited about all the things that the new iPad can do, I highly recommend you check out my channel about how to code on an iPad. Being able to code allows you to take the ideas in your imagination and then turn them into reality, and then to share them with the rest of the world. So what do you guys think of the review? Let me know what you agree and disagree with in the comments, and if you thought the video was good, definitely hit like and subscribe. Alright, this is Elliot the iPad Pro. See you guys in the next video.